common denominator. And I need all of you to stop what you're doing and listen. Let's talk about something important. Put that coffee down. I'm not here to waste your time. Everyone has access to the information. We just know how to analyze it better. Where else you're gonna have this much fun? You the man. You the man. Todd Father. Show me the money. This is what I've been doing. Had to trip on my bag. Had to trip on my bag. Wow. Had to trip on my bag. Wow. Had to trip on my bag. Yeah. Had to trip on my bag. Sixty percent of the time, it works. Every time. That doesn't make sense. Well, it's no trick to make a lot of money. All you want is to make a lot of money. Yo, what's going on, guys? Welcome back to another live episode of Learn Crypto. My name is Nick Hellman. I'm Todd Butterfield. Shout out to everybody tuning in right now live. Shout out to everybody who joins a little late or sees this after the fact. But even more of a shout out to that one thumbs down we got already five minutes into the show before we even speak. You're the true man. You are the best community member out there. Thank you for that. We appreciate it. He does we got not a lot have his bags about. full. You know, we had some FUD with, hey, are the ETFs being put on hold? We're going to get more in details on ETFs and why I believe they are just the tip of the iceberg for the, the ability of institutional money and traditional markets to have access to cryptocurrencies moving forward. We've been saying this for months. We are finally actually getting some reports and some of these uh, websites and from some reputable names. If you're listening to us, we've been talking about it for months. We're also going to talk about, did you get trolled by CZ, the founder of Binance? I'll show you that tweet. It is pretty hilarious if you've not seen it already. And ESPN, I was sitting there listening to ESPN, and they even brought up the topic of Bitcoin. I'll get, I'll get to that here in a little bit as well. I like to see all the names in here. Do you have any shout outs you want to give, Todd? Crypto Kiwi. Crypto Kiwi One. <laughs> That's a new name. Shout out to Deshaun for joining us. I heard a couple people subscribe while we were doing the intro what as up, well. Dennis? So shout out to you guys. And our name yep. did pop up on the screen. Deshaun. He was a new one. There we go. Now we are going to get into some good topics. We got Craig over here saying 20,000 Bitcoin by Thanksgiving. I think we're going to break all time highs by the end of 2018. I know the ETF probably won't go live until Q1 of 2019, but I believe the speculation on that ETF and the true price appreciation will break all time highs. We've been saying this since what? day one. All time highs. I'm saying $1.5 trillion total cryptocurrency market cap by the end of the year. That was my prediction all the way when we were still at 800. Hundred billion, and I think Todd, you said something like 1.3 trillion. You taking that back? Or are you riding with it? I'm riding it. We're riding with it. That's what we're talking <laughs> about. <laughs> Let's jump. At this rate, I mean, what what are we doing? Like 500 a day, or what? I mean, no problem. I think we're at all time high. Our new uh, short term highs right now as we're live. We'll have Todd looking at the charts as usual. We're gonna do a quick glance at Coin Market Cap, and somebody said, "Hey, what's going on with Zen? I saw that thing explode today." No news. That is merely the Explosion. fact that Zen Cash is just a solid crypto project. We had the interview and started talking about that while it was barely in the top 200. It is currently ranked number 75 and offers passive income with both secure nodes for the retail investor and super nodes for the more advanced investor. I know a ton of you have taken advantage of Zen and taken advantage of the node structure. Congratulations to you guys and welcome aboard the train. So what do we got going on here? Let me refresh this because it's just going up so fast. I need to refresh it. <laughs> $302.2 billion market cap. Bitcoin dominance is continuing to inch higher. 47.4%. Like I said, I don't think Bitcoin dominance is going to reach 70% like it was last summer. I just think there's too many solid altcoins out there. But I think it can inch a little bit higher before we really see the alt season. I still think that Bitcoin and some of these large caps are going to lead the true bull run. Once those get overinflated, profits will be scalped off the top of those and moved into individuals' favorite altcoins. Bitcoin at $8,347, up another 8.06%. Ethereum up 5%. XRP still struggling to up 2.81%, still below 50 cents. Bitcoin Cash up 
there was some kind of partnership agreement with Bitcoin Cash. I believe it was some kind of Asian uh, company said that the Bitcoin scaling is failing and Bitcoin Cash has faster and cheaper transaction fees. 8420. So shout Bitcoin. out with the partnership 84 there. 8430. Sorry, uh -oh. interrupt. We're running. We need to get over to the charts here in a second. Rolling a new high. And everything else is just kind of hanging in there. Tron is up 11.85%. Whoop, they got whoop. a lot going on. You know, I still think if you're into the high-risk plays, speculation plays, I believe they are going to announce a partnership on July 31st. Not a lot of information out there. They're kind of keeping it cryptic. Show me I the don't money. know a lot, but if history tells me anything, Show me the money. I believe that Tron will have a uh, Hopiism run, and uh, you'll have an opportunity to sell that and bag up some extra Bitcoin. Now, what are the big winners for today? Number one is Mithril up 24%. Number two is Zencash up 20.2% at $30.88. And that leads me to something very important for all of you new people watching. We will be giving away a Zencash from the last night's live show live here today. So if you haven't already, go to that video from last night's live show. Leave a comment in the comment section with your Zen address for a chance to win. But also on top of that, we will be giving away one full Zencash for tonight's episode. All you have to do is after this video is posted, leave a comment in the comment section. Be an active participant of the community. Leave your Zen Cash address. You can get it on Bittrex or Binance, and you are entered to win it as easy as that. We are giving away $30 per show at these current rates, and this is one that I think has much more upside to go. I mean, so hang on to them. Stack those bags if you like the product. And at the very least, this is going to get you to do a little bit of research on some of these projects that we talk about on a daily basis. There's made almost back to 50. We also got Zcash, Bitcoin Private, Made, and Tron. So congratulations to all the holders of those. Um, if you If you want to get active with swing trades and add some Bitcoin, that is your decision. Uh, but those are looking pretty strong right now, bouncing off those lows hard today. So without further ado, we need the Todd father to do his thing over on the charts. Some technical analysis. Let's see what the markets are looking like. Real quick, though, shout out to Chris K9 with the $1.99 Super Chat. Quote, we are pumped, excited times again. Thanks, guys. <laughs> hey, Chris, you are an awesome community member. You've been here forever. I just want everybody to know who's new and who's been here before. You know, we never lacked hope for cryptocurrencies. A lot of these people kind of stopped doing YouTube, stopped doing Twitter, whatever. We really thought the low was in at 5,800, and so far that is turning out to be a success. Let's see what Todd thinks. If we think we're going higher, do we need to consolidate? What's going on? I mean, the rally off that lows, as we keep saying, has been uh, pretty ideal, really. Wyckoff is doing it well, and with Elliott Wave, it's doing it pretty well. Uh, I think the issue with Elliott Wave now, everyone that really follows us, knows that I was calling this the one, two, three, four with a new high coming. But, uh, you know, at 8,400, that is uh, definitely a new high for the move. So I don't think this counts right anymore. So uh, that's why I was saying about be careful about selling and trying to scalp because I will say uh, when we did the 7,800, that was a good five wave. And we had that break of $200 in about a minute. I did put some sells in at 7,700. And then I looked at myself in the mirror and said, you got to cancel those and uh, cancel those. And here we are now at 8,400. So uh, I'm not sure the count now. I mean, this could still be the uh, three for the pink, but if so, probably it still has higher to go, maybe 8,800 or something. And then you could see a pretty you know, decent pullback for the way four, and then new highs again. So I, I don't know. I mean, I think the ETF's a done deal. I don't know whether they're going to announce that August 16th or whatever. If they delay it a month, I think that would just give us a sell-off that you'd want to buy. Uh, you know, when we've had triple long VIX ETFs and all the other crazy stuff, I don't think getting a uh, ETF 100% long is going to be any big deal. So I think that's coming. And I've said it, I think I said it yesterday, I mean, I'm getting a few of my uh, older stock clients that, you know, six, eight, nine months ago did not know, want to hear about crypto, did not want to hear about Bitcoin, now wants to hear about it. And they're willing to go to Coinbase and open up accounts and uh, buy these things. So when you start talking about ETFs, you start talking about Fidelity, NASDAQ, you know, now it's, it's not Coinbase, it's not... Uh, you know, 
all these crypto names that we know. So it's the stuff that people are comfortable with. So I just think the wind's behind our back still. You know, we'll have 30, 40% correction somewhere. Maybe we can try to trade around those things. But, uh, and we're going to have some news come out and drop us pretty hard, I'm sure. But you guys have been, we've been on here. We've seen Bitcoin drop 200 in a minute. In the past, I would have brought in real selling and never get back that high. And instead, we have a one minute sell off. We slowly rally back and then we blow through the highs again. So that's been pretty good action. So uh, I think we'll continue there. So uh, again, I think this rally goes a little bit higher before it runs into a little bit of trouble short term. Real quick, before you move on to the next charts, uh, what do we got going on in here? Schwartz Abaka says new lower lows in the next few weeks. Hey, that I mean, that would be probably the tone vase count for you. I am just from a macro and fundamental perspective, I am not seeing that. The reason I'm not seeing that is because the infrastructure being built around these, like Todd said, the names that we all know and love and that traditional uh, investors know, hedge fund, CBOE, uh, the NASDAQ, all these are creating the infrastructure, guys. You can believe it or you don't need to believe it. You can say that it's hope, you know, but I'm telling you it's coming around. And when I work for an institutional financial advisor and my boss, the owner of the company who I've talked to five times ever and the four times happened in the past few months and they were all about cryptocurrencies, that is telling me something and I try to portray that to you guys. They are trying to learn as much as they can because they know that managers and hedge funds will be approaching them and trying to invest clients' monies. These are pension plans for hospitals, universities, police departments, fire departments, big money plans that might start having allocation to cryptocurrencies in the future. I just, there is going to have to be some fundamental flaw that comes up for us to break, what was the low, 5,800. So you're assuming a $5,000 BTC is are on the horizon in the next couple of weeks, if I'm reading that correct. I just don't agree with that. <laughs> right, but, we're not going to agree with my evil twin tone, Butterfield. <laughs> <laughs> Wayne Dutton says a $1.5 trillion market cap with Bitcoin dominance at 40% would be a $35,000 Bitcoin. That kind of goes in line with what I've been saying. I really think we are going to break all-time highs on most of these coins and in Bitcoin in particular. I'm calling Calling for a thirty thousand dollar Bitcoin by the end of the year, that Man. is what it is. Thirty thousand dollars. But if we break all time highs, I'll be happy with that as well. Lloyd says, "Hey Nick, did you send me some Zen? I got one Zen deposit today, and trying to find out where it came from. Actually, Lloyd, you were the lucky winner of the Zen Cash Daily Zen Cash giveaway. So we went ahead and sent you that. If you didn't even get to watch yourself win, you might want to go watch that clip. It was somewhere in the middle of the episode last night." And then lastly, before I let you get back to the charts, Connor McNugget says he's still here, but he's only lurking in the background when he can. So shout cool. out to you, Connor. Shout out, Connor. I'm glad you're here. I want the new T-shirt, I got a super node. <laughs> got a I super want. node in my pants. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Outlaw Preacher, I, I went to bed at 5.40, I think it was, and got up at 7.15. So, and then I got people hitting websites, asking questions, and students. So, no, I've had no sleep. But I'm not going to get burnt out. If I didn't get burnt out the last six months, I am good to go. So I lost a few more hairs and a few more gray, but I'm here and I'm good. So and with the software kicking out some good numbers and life a little less stressful, stressful I mean, I'm good to go. 8480 Bitcoin. So here's Bitcoin Cash again on this guy's. Uh, let's go back to the 30 minute. And these charts would be a little bit different. I mean, the most bullish is we've done a one, two, one, two. Uh, we could do a one, two, three, four overlapping run up here uh, and do a five and then have an ABC pullback into ETF news or something. I'm not sure. I still think things work higher. I mean, I know a lot of people worried the alts were looking really sick uh, the last few days and much better. I mean, we got Litecoin here up 10%. Uh, so, uh, that one's getting away from, uh, a danger zone. Same thing, Ethereum. Classic back to 1670. I wish that one would, uh, perk up here, maybe. Neo still at 3421, not much there. So, some of these are disappointing. I mean, I, as we keep saying, at some point here, we got to start making decisions on right coins, wrong coins, because... A lot of coins aren't looking real right. Here's uh, ADA USDT. So I like the way that one's acting. I think a move above 18 would get that one going again for a little pork blaster here. 
bat, not doing too much after those uh, big uh, flags up the last few days, or yesterday, I guess it was. What are they calling those? What are those hammers? Or I don't know. Oh, these are the TNA guys. I'm from old school, so. Digibyte. We talked about that one. Having a pork blaster up here, so I think that one's still good. It'd be nice to get that move above the .05. That, that's, that's another one where we did that proof-of-work, proof-of-stake hybrid possibility for Digibyte, like literally the at day the of the low. <laughs> the day of the low. That's why it's always important to, I mean, not saying that our, we only have 5,000 people here. I'm not saying that that information pushed the price higher, but 3,500 people did watch it. Many people were talking about it on Twitter, and then they came out with a nice marketing push, got listed to some more exchanges. We liked the Digibyte for a while. I've always been saying from a technical perspective, Digibyte is probably the most powerful UTXO under current construction. Now, if Lightning Network takes another leap of faith and takes another step forward, then maybe Litecoin, Bitcoin can then get back as being the dominant UTXO as far as usability purposes for peer-to-peer -peer transactions. I'm not saying Digibyte is the same strength of store value and name recognition of Bitcoin or Litecoin. All I'm saying is from a pure user, uh, a pure user perspective, Digibyte is easier, faster, and cheaper to use. That's all I'm going to say. I didn't see Connor was talking about a black swan event dropped below 5,000. Dang. Uh, there's uh, mentioned made. There's made was in the top uh, gainers today. Back at the, uh, the dark blue line is a uh, pretty big resistance area. I think we're going to get above that. No problemo. Somebody mentioned quantum. I know that's been uh, slow down here. That was so hot there for a while. So that one uh, a little disappointing here short term. Strat USD is another one. Like the way that acted up on that move to 340, but it's kind of quiet here. Tron USD. Do not own. Then USD up 10% today. That trend line I don't think is exactly right, so I wouldn't call that a breakout. Uh, XLM USD up 5%. That one still looks like a pork blaster ready to go. That's still up Monero. There's been people asking about that. That one looks like it's ready to take out some resistance as well. ZEC USD up 16%, ready to take out the previous high as well. Zen, who's your daddy, Zen? Whoa. That one looks nice. And then uh, ZRX still at $1.12, not doing too much. But we're going to stay with that one. And holding at higher levels, so we shall see. It kind of looks like a pork blaster in the making up there. We'll see what happens. It's what either is... going to go up or down. I don't say a lot of that, so you're not going to get that from me. <laughs> we're going up or we're CJ, going down. CJ, I don't, I don't do that. Well, it's a measured move of $4 up or $4 down. No, I don't really play those games. I'm pretty well a little more direct on that. 84.80 Bitcoin. So, Where do you see that the next Bitcoin overhead resistance would be? Around like the 8,700 mark is? Uh, probably 20,000. Oh, okay. Let's be realistic. We got some new people in here. We can't be <laughs> resistance. Yeah, like where do you I think? I think the only thing now, you, all you can do is try to use Elliott Wave. Wycoff's not going to give you a resistance point here. That's why I throw a little bit of Elliott Wave on top of it. Uh, you know, I thought I said we'd break through 7780, and we was going to be off to the races because that was going to catch a lot of stops. Uh, we probably will spike through this 8615. I'm guessing we'll spike through 88, 85 maybe on this rally. But I, again, I mean, you got to have an Elliott wave count, I think, to say where this rally could stop. And that one, the one, two, three, four, five here does not look, I don't like the way it looks anymore. So uh, I don't know. Again, I think surprises are still to the upside. So I, uh, I think the LA wave count that I've had is, I think this one, two is good. And uh, I'm not sure from there. So I, I think you just got to let this thing keep uh, working out to the upside. So I would expect a little higher here. And then somewhere we're going to probably have this wave four somewhere. All right. Let me steal this back to keep this show moving along. But before we do, 
CJ over here, welcome to the channel. I just gave you a wrench because you're over here talking. And all you got to do, guys, is be an active community, mem community member, be a good community member, help people, have some fun, and you can earn yourself a wrench as well. He says, 50K Bitcoin by the end of year. If you thought last year was parabolic, you haven't seen anything yet. Now, I don't know if I'm going to go that far, but I can tell you what. This next article is going to lead to why me and Todd have been so bullish for so long working in traditional finance, understanding that there's a ton of money out there that hasn't even dipped its toes in cryptocurrency. More ETF chatter. Biggest financial institutions poised to join the fray. Fidelity, BlackRock, and Goldman Sachs, just to name a few. A pending Bitcoin ETF application is sure to be approved, but that isn't the talk around the water coolers. At places like CBOE, CME, and the New York Stock Exchange, a global financial institutions, each of those organizations is sure that an approval is coming and are preparing the infrastructure for onboarding of any and all new crypto money. We've been talking about this forever. It is being built right before your eyes. You can either take the buy signal or you can hope that we see a couple hundred dollar drop further like when we were at 5,800 and now you're caught chasing it. You're hoping, you're hoping for a drop so that you can maybe deploy some of that fiat that you have. The talk has quickly turned to the next set of crypto quote structured products that could flood the market in 2019. All manner of ETFs connected to other cryptocurrencies and baskets of altcoins are coming, and it won't stop at just ETFs. A quote from Gen Gemini says, We've got months worth of backlog that is waiting for the first approval. Clients in every corner of the globe and some of the biggest institutions in the world have crypto products prepped and ready to hit the markets. We expect 2019 to be the year of accelerated adoption. Now, people, you guys might be like, Oh, year of 2019 accelerated adoption. Okay, well, that means 2019 is going to be the year of speculation and retail investor once again. Some of these institutions and hedge funds are gaining access to cryptocurrencies right now through Coinbase Custody and, uh, and the Coinbase Index that are do, they are doing over there, as well as via Grayscale with all of their OTC products. If all these things, once one ETF gets approved, the floodgates are going to open like this article said. Now, I had a question earlier today, and you guys might be asking as well, what does it mean by a basket index? What that means is, for example, in traditional markets, say you have a tech basket, that, e that index will be made up of Apple, Microsoft, Google, Facebook, etc., all weighted based on their market caps. And I found an example of what one uh, cryptocurrency basket index might look like. As of June 30th, 2018, the components of the index were 55% Bitcoin, 20% Ethereum, Ripple, Bitcoin Cash, Dash, Litecoin, Stellar Lumens, Monero, Zcash, and Ethereum Classic. Does anything look familiar here, guys? These are all of the large cap coins that we tell you that you need to have a par in part of your portfolio. I know we all love the altcoins, the hopes of the 10x or 100x or 1000x, or, but I can tell you what, these large cap coins have a very, uh, very much easier or better risk uh, proposition for them, number one. And number two, they can still 10x from these current valuations because institutional money is going to go where it has the easiest access. That is going to be these ETFs and these indexes. Where there's liquidity. Look at the coins that will be there. That is where the liquidity will be. That is where the money will go first. You have the opportunity to make gains off of the institutional wave. Now, once that wave comes, obviously whales and smart retail investors like ourselves will take some of those profits and eventually move it into those altcoins that we love so much. But you don't want to miss out on the first bull run. So you need to hold some of these large cap coins. I'm going to say this for the next three months until this becomes a reality. And I don't want to see in the comment box after we see massive gains out of these top coins. Oh, man, I missed it because I was 100% in ECA or 100% in Zen or 100% in Linda. That's not what you want to be doing. Those micro cap coins need to serve the role in your portfolio. And if you find gems, diamonds in the rough, you can have massive success. But you still need to hold these large caps more now than ever as we see this institutional infrastructure forming right before our eyes. That's about all I had to talk about ETFs. Obviously, you guys probably saw this article coming out that said the SEC is delaying the decision for ETFs, but that only applies to this dioxin investments that was made on January, back in January. Number one, this is not a recognizable name, but number two, they're also known for leveraged ETFs. I do not see the SEC approving a leveraged Bitcoin ETF before they approved a CBOE not or no, but, a SolidX. Yeah, not no, but hell no. 
standard right. ETF. So that does not scare me at all. And they even say down here, notably, none of the ETF proposals being postponed are from VanEck, which is CBOE, and SolidX, which are currently under discussion by the wider crypto community. More than 100 comments have been submitted for that proposal, and the decision still may occur as early as next month, which would be August 16th. If that gets pushed back to September, guess how much I care? I don't. If there's a dip from that news, I will then buy more because it is coming. What do we got going on in the chat box? <sighs> Nothing major. Nothing major. You weren't, we're keeping tabs over there. We got some rocket yeah. ships, some moons. What up, Catherine? Uh, we had Joel saying, what do you guys think about Pundi X and Binance bots? Pundi X, I think, is interesting. This is one that we've talked about in the past. I haven't gone all in on it because there was some red flags on their distribution of their token and their team members. But they are try trying to attack the point of sale services. My problem with that is, will they find some competition from other point of sale providers that are already available and maybe some credit card companies like MasterCard, Visa, are they going to let this slip away? I don't know. PundiX does have a first mover advantage and they do have the hardware already in place. We'll see what kind of partnerships they will get and what kind of merchant integrations they get here in the short term future. Um, I think the PundiX, where I kind of did a quick review was in the title. So if you want to scroll back through some of our previous live videos, you can kind of see my, my first impression there when I did a little bit of research on that. As far as Binance bots, I'm not too sure what you're talking about. If you want to elaborate a little more and I see the comment, I'll get to that. I dip, we dip. <laughs> I dip, you dip, we dip. <laughs> you guys are crazy. I think somebody's asking about, you know, are we going to pull back before 10,000? I mean, I think somewhere here, I'm just going to say 80, you know, 87, 8,800. Yeah, we're going to have a 50% uh, pullback. So maybe come back to uh, the 7,800 level, maybe. I'd probably be a buyer. I had said when we ran up to 7,500 that I thought, you know, they weren't going to, they were not going to go down and let you back in if we were good because it's just not the way the markets work. So we went through that 6,850 to never see it again. So. As long as it's saying keep subdividing higher, higher and volume coming in and et cetera, I mean, you've got to stay on the bull side here for a while. And I don't want to get too excited here and too giddy either, but everything's acting right. That's all I can say. I mean, there's, there's no way you can be short here or underinvested and feeling cool about it. James, now, said, James uh, says, I can't wait for the best of Learn Crypto series to prove that you guys have been right, I believe. If somebody wants to put the best of series already with what we've talked about here in the past and talked about the coins that will be listed on Coinbase, ETC, ZRX was mentioned, et cetera, BAT was mentioned. You know, some of these things that we have predicted. And there's awesome. Gary O'Connell. Gary's in here. He's rolling out of bed. He liked the BAT. He liked the ZRX. What up, Gary? Jay Stevens says, I just need another $1.8 million for a master note. Hey, swing trades and dollar cost averages. That's what it's all about. He I says, these low good. prices on Linda, it's going to bounce back to higher levels. I mean, yeah, that thing 4 x from the interview, it is now back down to around 20 Satoshis. If you have any interest in Linda or the Linda X project they're doing, this is probably the lowest you're going to get it, guys. You might be able to pick it up for 17, 18, 19 Satoshis, but right now it's sitting around 20. It's definitely not a bad purchase. I think a market cap is around $25 million. That is it. All right. Angry Dragon says, Nick, all of the airdrops from EOS, do you leave them on Binance or move to a wallet? Is so which one do you recommend? <laughs> so Angry, what I would recommend is watching the two interviews I did with EOS because I asked that very question to both parties. They gave me their favorite EOS uh, wallets. They told me the exchanges in which you can already trade those airdrops and in which manner to store the airdrops and EOS moving forward. So go ahead and go to the interview section on the YouTube homepage and watch those and I think you'll get your answers. I also provided a bunch of the links in the descriptions of those videos as well. What up, Wayne? So I guess while everybody's talking, before I toss it back over to Todd and see if you guys have any charts, I think we need to give away some Zen. Do you guys want us to give away some Zen? Dang, keep some for me. No, I, were, I can't <laughs> keep any. We're just giving it away. $30 worth of Zen will be given away today. Them. Let's go ahead and do it. Don't forget, guys, if you're just tuning in and you want to participate in the next Zen giveaway, leave a comment in the comment section below with your Zen Cash wallet address. While you were down quit, there... <laughs> quit giving away good coins and go up 20% a day. <laughs> Give some shit stuff away. Get rid of the crap. 
While you're down there in the comment section, some. take a look in our description box to see everything we offer outside of YouTube and get over to LearnCrypto.io to check out our cryptocurrency trading course, our soon-to-be Pulse of the Market trading software, as well as some other goodies over there, including our crypto private client group in which we help manage your portfolios using trading API keys. So let's go ahead and do this. This is from last night. Spin night's the wheel. Game. Spin the wheel. No, we don't do that. We're going to grab this. What up, Gary O'Connell? He still likes A and B. A and B Ambrosis? Is that what that is? He keeps coins for a long time, just doesn't keep his girlfriends. That's what it is. <laughs> what up, Fabin? Let's see here. 44 unique commenters. One in 44 chance of winning one Zen Cash and adding it to your bag. Drum roll, please. Barack Obama. <laughs> Barack Obama <laughs> wins again. He hasn't been in here. Diego. Delago. Delago. What Shout up? out to you. You didn't have anything for me to read, but you do have your Zen address, and that is all we need. So welcome to the community. Congratulations, you won. So it's as easy as that, guys. Don't miss out on your opportunity. Leave a comment in the comment section with that address, because who doesn't like a free coin that is worth $30 right now? And very well could go to $200 in the short-term future. <laughs> All right, by Thanksgiving. All right. I got a couple things real quick, kind of funny things, and then we'll let Todd have the chart. So, Todd, if you guys have any charts you want Todd to look at here in a second, go ahead and throw them in the chat box. He will grab those, write those down. I don't think that's a hairdo I'm going to have. <laughs> well, apparently this is the Bitcoin of quarterbacks. I was today, you know. I'm not crypto 24-7. I was at work, had the headphones in, listening to some ESPN. You know, fantasy football is coming up. And you know what gives just as good a gains as Bitcoin? Me winning every single fantasy football league. So if you want to lose your money, invite me to your fantasy football league so I can take it. But anyways, I was watching the Will Kane show, and uh, I forget who said it. Randy Scott actually said it. He was there evaluating quarterbacks, and he said Patrick Mahomes, who is a rookie, or it's his second year for Kansas City, he said he is the Bitcoin of quarterbacks. Quote, everyone is talking about it. You're not sure what you got, but the upside is great. <laughs> and I went ahead and tweeted that out and said, Bitcoin on ESPN, we are getting somewhere, boys. That was hilarious. So I proceeded to try to reach out to Randy Scott and told him, hey, Hold a buy Bitcoin sign live on the air and become an instant legend and watch the ratings shoot to the moon. He didn't reply to me. So I actually reached out to his co-host, who is a former NFL player right here, Andrew Hawkins. Shout out to you, Andrew. Uh, he has, you know, He's doing his thing over there. I told him, hey, I know you're logged in on Twitter on the MacBook while you're live. Tell Randy to man up pertaining to this th thread, or you can just steal a spotlight. He didn't really bring up Bitcoin on the air, but he did reply while he was live on ESPN on the Will Kane show and said, LOL, I have met more Bitcoin than I should, my friend. I just thought that was awesome. They were talking about ESPN. This guy took the time while he was live on ESPN. We were talking with each other, and he replied that. Now, I don't know whether that's true or not. I'm assuming the guy is not going to lie. But I pretty much just told him, hey, I'm glad you got some of that NFL cash in some good places, and we're going to all-time highs here on Bitcoin. So I just thought that was funny. When I was watching that live, I can't get away from cryptocurrencies. I'm trying to watch some sports, and they're talking about Bitcoin over there. Shout out to Chris K9 with Chris, another buck 99. Chris K9 with the buck 99. We win every day watching you, Todd, and Nick. Thank you very much. We try to do as much as we can to give you pertinent information on fundamentals and technical analysis while trying to have some fun. Now, if you guys were the Bears, all the Bears got trolled by none other than CZ, the founder of Binance Today. He simply <laughs> tweeted out, are you on the bus? That's it. That's all he tweeted. That was hilarious. You know, if I was in that position, I probably would have some fun as well. Uh, obviously, he's really happy. I'm this like, helps. No, I'm at the railroad station. <laughs> what the this, hell? This thing ain't going nowhere. <laughs> Are you on the bus? And what's kind of funny is some people were tweeting some of these buses out, the sightseeing Malta <laughs> bus, because they are over in Malta. And I'll tell you what, I was in Malta, and it's a really small community, and there's kind of three separate sections of Malta. But when you see those buses driving down those tiny streets, it is hilarious. But I definitely would not want to be on the upper deck of any of those buses. Right, you don't want to be on the short bus either, Jay. <laughs> <laughs> Let's give it back to Todd for a second. I know you guys are sick of hearing about me. I don't have much to say. I will. I agree with Wayne. I mean... Uh, you know, here I, I still think it's, it's hard to be cute trading because, you know, if we're in a really bull market here, trying to uh, 
trade some of these things, you know, still you're going to get left out. So cause just like earlier, if I would have sold 7,700 Bitcoin, I don't know what you do now at 8,400. So I just can't. That's probably more stress than me carrying these things on the downside because I didn't think we'd go as deep as we did. I thought probably 9,000 was max, and I, I could have took that. Uh, but my good clients, we all agreed to be 70% long, stay that way, because I thought you know, we had a, a huge bull market coming, which I still think is coming. So, uh, and it goes back to the same thing I keep saying. My average client does not want to hear about this stuff, but all of a sudden over the weekend, I get three people wanting to hear about it. And uh, they're going to Coinbase opening accounts. So, and I know they're going to tell their friends and everyone's going to be like, what do you mean you bought Bitcoin? You must be crazy. And then they're going to give them the reasons why you have to do it. And then they're going to jump in in two seconds. And if they can call up Schwab, they can call up Merrill Lynch and buy an ETF or buy uh, one of these ETFs holding 10 coins. That's just too simple. So they're going to do that, I believe. And that's just way more money than we've seen coming into these markets. So uh, as long as these things keep working higher, I think we're good. So, And I showed that Wyckoff somatic. I mean, uh, we need a sign of strength here, but damn, we're getting that. So we did the spring. We got everybody shook out of 5740, and now we're just rallying on uh, no real news. I mean, I don't know if there's any real news. You could all, all you could say is it's about the ETFs, I think. But, you know, that's not uh, for sure. So I, we're just rallying, I think, because everybody's short and under-owned. And I, and I mentioned, I think, on a live show I did in the morning, there was a hedge fund that, is trading Bitcoin, and there's no doubt they're supposed to be long Bitcoin. No one's going to want to see Bitcoin surge while you're sitting in cash. I mean, that's the way to get your hedge fund shut down. And, I, you know, those guys weren't long. So people like that have got to chase these things. So I think that's what's happening here. Everybody's just chasing it. So. Sweet. I did have, how did I forget this article? I need to talk about this. Oh, man. Tim Draper is at it again. Quote, Whoa. there is a clear case that cryptocurrencies will replace fiat currency altogether. Now, if you don't know who Tim Draper is, he has a ton of money, and he's kind of well-known in this industry because he said in, back in 2014, within three years, that Bitcoin will surpass $10,000. What happened in 2017, three years later? Bitcoin not only hit $10,000, but hit a high of around $20,000. Now, he says he's been a little quiet. He didn't really want to make any predictions. He wanted to let the dust settle for the next prediction. And this is the prediction he is now bringing out. He says, as of now, there is about $80 trillion worth of fiat currency. Okay, we're going to do some math here. $80 trillion worth of fiat currency. As the cryptocurrencies are expanding, Tim Draper believes that fiat currency circulation in the coming time will fall from $80 trillion to only $30 trillion and will be replaced by cryptocurrencies eventually as the total uh, monetary system expands to $100 trillion. He predicts that Bitcoin may, might end up as 20 to 30% of that market share as he explains the scenario. He believes we will be somewhere around $130 trillion dollars but only maybe 100 trillion would be in cryptocurrency, 20% of which would be in Bitcoin. He is of the view that Bitcoin has a network effect. For instance, if a user has Bitcoin and no one else does, then it is worthless. But if two people have Bitcoin and recognize it, then a connection is created. With it, the connection grows. It's the square of how many nodes are in the network. Right now, there are 40 million Bitcoin wallets. Tim predicts that this number will continue to grow and the value of Bitcoin will be determined by the square of that wallet number. A $20 trillion market cap for Bitcoin would be enormous. Anybody do the math on that real quick? What is that, a $1 million Bitcoin or somewhere around there? Tim Draper is not saying that fiat currencies will no longer exist, but he believes that they will only have 30% of the market share. Bitcoin will have 20 to 30 percent of the market share and the winning altcoins will make up the remaining uh, percentage of the global monetary market share. That is crazy numbers. You can Skype me in from my island. I am super bullish. I don't know if I'm that bullish, but Tim Draper has said some crazy things before that have all come true. If cryptocurrencies do have mass adoption, then this makes a lot of sense. The very reason for this is that a lot of these cryptocurrencies have a finite supply. Bitcoin can only have 21 million Bitcoins. Yes, you can break it down into multiple Satoshis, whatever people want to say for inflation, blah, blah, blah. But there's only 21 million that can exist. 
So as more and more people want their piece of the pie of the Bitcoin, Bitcoin ecosystem, the price only has one way to go, and that is up. Let's see if Tim Draper is at it again with his crazy predictions that come true. This one is, I think, many years down the road, but he makes it seem like it is right around the corner. That it would be pretty, pretty crazy. I saw Jeff Wee, you mentioned four-hour volume as, as uh, pulled back. Now, again, this is Bittrex. It's not the software. I'm still having a little bit of issue with just like the last few hours of the software updating. They're trying to fix that now. But, uh, you know, I think the four-hour volume probably has fallen off because we've done what I'm going to say is a fourth wave triangle. So, and then this is a fifth wave here on some type of short-term basis. So I'm guessing we have some type of ABC sideways here, maybe back to 8,200, and then probably another new high. So I don't think that low volume here is a problem because it was during sideways consolidation. So, and there's no... Uh, if you look, again, this isn't my software, so I'm not trading on this hard, but volume here on the 15-minute on-bounce volume, everything's hitting new highs. There's not, uh, you know, there's no divergences here. I don't think there's anything telling you that we got a problem, so. Do you want to look at a couple charts, maybe a NEO chart somebody was asking about? No, I'd rather take a nap, but. We got a couple more minutes left in us. <laughs> oh, yeah. I've had an hour and 40 minutes power nap overnight what are you looking at Let's what look up at, mflow somebody was asking about neo if you guys have any other charts that you want todd to look at somebody neo. said xlm and ada i mean neo uh my thoughts was we did a one two elliott wave and we uh are working on higher levels It'd be nice to see some strength come in here but we're at a recovery high right now so uh Let's see if we can get this thing above uh, 3570 or so. That would help that chart out tremendously. ADA, 17.5. Same thing, a move above 18, I think we'll get that thing going better. Get a lot of these coins moving in lockstep again. And XLM, can I have a pork blaster or no? Are you ready for it? I'm, I'm born ready. Is it looking like it or what? <laughs> That's a pork blaster right there on the five minute. Dang, I couldn't. Oh, that's priming up. That thing's ready to blast that's off. That's a guaranteed pork blast. <laughs> <laughs> uh, if everybody new to the channel is probably like, what is a pork blaster? That is the high level. Lip brisket. High level consolidation followed by an upward move. A lip brisket is a consolidation then followed by the downward breakout. But Better known as a Gary trade. That is Gary. If we ever have a limp brisket, it, Gary's probably holding it. <laughs> and with this downtrend here on this uh, pork blaster, I mean, yeah, I mean, XLM could have a pretty good night, a pretty good 24 hours, I think, still. So uh, there's Zen, 3227. Whoa. I need to get off here. I got some swing trades to make holding on that right bad in. boy. I don't know if you guys follow me on Twitter, but we had another couple successful tra swing trades that I was doing live towards the end of my work day. So if you followed, you could have capitalized on it. I hit it within 10,000 Satoshis on both directions. I can't remember what trade I have in right now. That's why I probably need to wrap this up and get logged in. Be careful. You might go to sleep and it'll be 50 tonight. Hey, that could very well happen. <laughs> Hilton Stone says, morning, gentlemen. Have you looked at DGB's current consolidation? Yep. Looks like it's going to break to the upside soon. Looks like a moonshot coming. When we, moon. We already looked at it pretty in depth, but do you want to pull up that did you, that did you buy chart again for him? Also, we got wonderful blocks wanting you to take a look at Steam's chart as well. There's Digibyte back to the .05, so uh, that was kind of a little pork blaster too. So, if that thing breaks, that thing's heading all the way up to seven cents. It won't take much to rock and roll that either. And then look at Steam for wonderful blocks over there, or wonderful Steam. bricks. I mean, sorry, I mispronounced your name not once but twice. That's embarrassing. Hold on, I gotta go to. Steam USD. I mean, there's a few coins look like that. I'm not impressed. I'd rather be in the stronger coins here, but I still think some of these can break out when you're not looking, so. 
not a favorite. I don't really own any. I would hope that these recent lows here hold in the last few days, keep that thing moving higher. I had one more thing I want to talk about, but also somebody said, uh, where is it? Hey, guys, I know you probably talked about this many times, but what are your views about the importance of trading BTC pairs as opposed to fiat pairs? Now, I'll let Todd talk about this in a second, but really, before you even start trading, you got to decide what is your goal in trading. Are you trying to accumulate coins? Are you trying to accumulate fiat? Are you trying to accumulate Bitcoin? Now, if you're trying to accumulate Bitcoin, you might be better off trading only with BTC pairs and trading based on Satoshi prices. But a lot of individuals are here to make money. And if they are trying to trade for fiat gains, that means they're going to go to USD pairs for number one. It is easy to get it back to the USD fiat because you are trading against a pegged asset, which does make the patterns and the trading a little bit easier. So that is up to you. You got to decide whether you're trying to gain fiat or whether you're trying to gain Bitcoin right off the start. I'm Todd, not trying, what's your opinion? I don't want to trade a trading pair against Bitcoin and Bitcoin's leading the rally. I mean, that just, that's putting pressure on all these Bitcoin pair charts, which screws up your trading as far as I can say. I mean, so there is no way I'll ever do that with a software. I couldn't care less about a Bitcoin trading pair. I didn't even really want them on the software for real, but I will since we're going to subscribe to software, but there's no way. Andreas says Bitcoin swing now 8288. That is kind of the price that I think Todd was saying the next kind of resistance zone will be. What I what I say 87 or 88 and you, you said somewhere around there too. I can't yep. remember. So that's up to you, dude. Got wrecked. You know, uh, it's just when you have Bitcoin, when you're trading as Bitcoin Satoshi value, that is another variable because now you are relying on the Bitcoin price with USD Tether. It's a pegged asset. So it just if you're trading based on um, patterns or support levels or whatever, it just is sometimes easier in a USD tether chart because the patterns and the counts are going to be more accurate. You don't have that secondary factor of Bitcoin prices or Bitcoin FOMO or some kind of price manipulation. Right, you're trading against a stable, stable, uh, you know, the other side of the coin. So like right there on Litecoin, I mean, this chart I think still looks favorable and we could bust out here. And I've been friendly for this. And then you bring up the Litecoin BTC. I don't know how you'd want to be long that coin. I mean, that chart's horrible. So, you know, I'd be out of that thing if I was trading Litecoin to, to Bitcoin. But that's because Bitcoin's flexing its muscle here, which is what I think will continue. And I'm not even that, you know, I'm not. Also, before we get out of here, I think we got to graduate, don't we? Yep. We got to bring that up. Do you got that? Give me a little music, make me feel good. We got Philip Greer. No, that's from yesterday. Sorry, Philip Greer. He, he just took the, he bought the course like 10 days ago. Crank it out. Jammed through it. I helped him quite a bit. He called in, we did some conference calls and uh, he's pretty excited. So he graduated today and welcome to the community. And I will say, I sent out an update on uh, the cryptocurrencies and Wyckoff group and also the PCG group. I've got a gentleman working on some of those. We've had a few problems. Mike for here fixed and then we had more issues, but I'm trying to get that so we can talk more about the software. We can talk more about the course and we can talk more about PCG as a group. So if you bought the course, you're automatically in those groups. If you uh, purchase the software, you'll be in the software group. If you're a PCG client, you'll be in the PCG group. So just trying to get it where I can bring in obviously more people. We can get a good community and uh, get more talking back and forth. And hopefully on the software, you know, more people monitoring it and throwing it out there. Hey, did you see this on the five minute, blah, blah, blah. So, you know, cause I'm pretty busy as well during the day. So it's not gonna hurt to have a few more eyes on stuff. So that's the plan. That's what we're talking about. I do have one last thing. You guys are talking a lot about Binance and BNB and what they got going on with their expansion, et cetera. But they did just add another value proposition to the BNB token. What is this value proposition? Well, not only before when you held BNB, if you wanted to pay your fees with the BNB token, you got a 50% trading reduction. Now they're doing something different. You can actually earn a trading reduction via a trade, right, a trade tier. So if you trade less than 100 Bitcoin and you hold zero BNB tokens, it is still a 0.1% fee as you can see here. But if you move up a level and you trade over 100 Bitcoin of total volume within 30 days, 
and you have to hold 50 BNB, then you do get a trading fee reduction. As you can see here, big traders that want reduced fees because they are high, they are high paced, big money traders are going to have to hold the BNB token in order to be eligible for these fee reductions. I will say one thing. CZ is a genius at trying to create value propositions for the BNB token in current form. I think the next major move up with BNB, as you guys know, we have seen some nice price, price rises and in Satoshi value. It is giving a lot of that back. I think this can help get more holders behind the coin, but the next major move out of this token will be when Binance and CZ make their own proprietary blockchain. They've already hinted that that is coming. If that comes, I suspect that BNB will be the only way to interact, utilize, and build upon that blockchain. And with the small token supply, it will be around 100 million at that time. Then is when you will see gains out of BNB. The real question is, are we going to able to be able to time that trade well? Um, so I'm going to keep my eyes out. I'm going to keep uh, my ear to the ground or whatever that terminology is, to see if I get any hints from CZ that that proprietary blockchain is on the horizon because then and only then is when I'm going to add to the BNB bag in a large manner. But look, if you're trading short-term, let's come back to the chart. If you're trading short-term, this is a three-minute. You know, again, you're going to want this on the software with 89 uh, exchanges to make sure you're looking at true volume. But here we had a good sell-off on the three-minute OBV. And you can see we had sideways in the price of Bitcoin, and then it takes out the highs. It had been real easy to bought that as it broke 78.15 or so. And then here we've got a pull off in the volume, really just sideways, did a triangle, went to new highs again. So uh, we talked about that back here on the fourth way. We had a spring back here too on the way forward. So we, and I was calling those things kind of live on air as well. So. And we keep recovering from sharp sell-offs. So, I mean, right now there's, you know, and there's no, if you're short-term trading, I mean, uh, even right here, and again, this is only Bittrex, which is not, you shouldn't be looking at if you're trading three-minute Bitcoin. But uh, this type of move, if it was on our software, you're seeing volume is not going to a new high here, why price has, which would say that's suspect. And if you do Elliott Wave, a triangle is a fourth wave, and the next move is a termination, so this rally would stop somewhere here. But then, you know, this, the thing is, go here to uh, Binance. There it is. Not going to new high there. And then let's see what uh, Coinbase looks like. But see, there's Coinbase. So if you lump all those together, volume is probably okay. But this probably is a fifth wave. I think somewhere here, probably ABC. Slight pullback to maybe 8,100. Then I would guess probably another dig in higher. But that's trying to be cute, and I don't think you want to be cute here. Because I would, like I said, back at 7,700, you could look at Elliott Wave and took some profits. You could took profits at 78, 7,900. Now here you are at 8,500 almost, wondering what to do. So I don't think you want to do that. I think you got to try to sit on your hands here. Somebody, I think earlier I missed it. I think it might have been Zimmy Jim. He said he had $30 on Bittrex. Now, is that $30 in fiat or in Bitcoin? He was wondering what to buy. You know, with $30, you have a couple options. If you want a larger cap coin, uh, I, I would still say that Ethereum Classic is super undervalued here, guys. As soon as that Coinbase announcement happens and trading goes live and these indexes, oh my God. Now, I don't want to keep talking about it. I don't want to seem like a shill and I got a massive bag. I'm continuing to mine it. But, you know, I put my money where my mouth is, and I truly believe that Ethereum Classic is going to easily double on the announcement. It is going to be a $100 cryptocurrency in no time. Damn. I don't know what the rest of the market will be at that time, but Ethereum Classic will be. I guess there's no, no disclaimer, but do your own research because this is just for entertainment this purposes This is just entertainment. Only. But, and, you know, I just pick these numbers. You know, I, I have all these post notes here. I just write down numbers, and I go, boom, Zencash 200. Boom, Ethereum Classic Hold 100. On Get the eight Boom, ball. Bitcoin 30,000. That's what we do, but it just seems to work. And you guys can do your own research, but I think that's undervalued, so you could buy two of those. Also, if you want more of a, something that's been really lagging and maybe might see some better volume with Bittrex adding fiat to their platform, you might want to look at Ubik. 
at around a dollar and vert coin around a dollar now you only have thirty dollars but that's a good opportunity to get that unit bias going bag 30 of those those have been very much underperformers and if those get the spotlight once again like we've seen in the last bull run and if the fiat onboarding platform of bitrex is a success and we get some more volume on that exchange some of those you know coins that are only on bitrex is our main one major exchange will see a nice price increase and Do I will your own research. Litecoin trading 90s. A few people just mentioned it traded like 90, 50. I think what'll really screw you up if Bitcoin decides to drop off a quick 400 when you're not looking, and why it does that, Litecoin, Ethereum, and all these uh, dogs perk up, and then all of a sudden lead the rally. I think that would probably uh, just show, you know, how strong we are. So here, Connor McNugget said, check out IOST. Uh, yeah. That'd be a big, big price bar with big volume down here, straight up. That's a 25 to 34. Well, but I think that's what's going to happen. If we're in a bull market now and headed to uh, much higher, a lot of these coins that don't look very well when they take out these previous highs are probably going to do some of that. So, uh, you know, same thing, under owned, uh, and just keeps going. So, and that's why, once again, I mean, if you're, if you're, in this saying, you couldn't have been happy with the performance the last few days, uh, and all of a sudden it changes in a minute. So, sit on your hands, I think. Paul, before we run out of here, Paul says ETH is definitely lagging Bitcoin, and I'm probably going to say something that is not going to be popular, and I know Todd's not going to oh like it either. Oh my God, don't talk about Ripple. I'm not talking about Ripple. <laughs> I don't even bring up Ripple anymore. I hate being crucified for being right. I mean, what? <laughs> no, but what I'm going to say is, uh, I personally believe that Ethereum, obviously, it's going to have green as bull markets run, but I think Ethereum is going to underperform some of these other protocol tokens. I've been saying this for a while. As we're getting more developed in Generation 3 protocol tokens, I think they will take some of the market share away from Ethereum. Those could be EOS. It could be NEO. It could be LIS. you got Ethereum Classic. You're going to have Linda X. You're going to have all these protocols that are all fighting for what Ethereum has already accomplished and creating better ways and better decentralized application platforms that aren't going to have the congestion that Ethereum is currently going through. The only way that I see Ethereum can break out and still be an overperformer for this cryptocurrency ecosystem is if they can figure out their scaling solutions, which they so far they are failing to do. And they also do have the fact that they will find themselves into these institutional basket investments when those come. But I think just from a macro view that they will start to lose a little bit of protocol market share. I still think they're probably going to be the number one protocol for the foreseeable future. But I think they might just underperform some of these other protocols moving into this next year or two. I know nobody likes to hear that. I know a lot of people disagree with me, probably even Todd. But that's just my opinion. Here's CVC. Someone asked about really sideways. That's a 45-minute chart. Can't say much. No real opinion there. And then uh, Jay Stevens said he's buying more Digibyte for his, I think he's the one getting the island. And then I think, Jay, you mentioned IDTI on the stock side. Here it is. You can see volume did not follow the rally up. It's been trending down while we went to new highs. Technometers overbought down here. So uh, I'm guessing there's probably, that was probably an up thrust with the test today. I would think there's downside coming on IDTI. Maybe just come down here to this 32 level or something. Then I'd probably be more interested. Let the technometer come down to 38 or something. So I'd Elizabeth, wait for that to pull back. Elizabeth says, list greater than ETH? Question mark. Uh, sorry, I disagree. I'm not saying any of these are greater than Ethereum. All I'm saying is the way market dynamics work is that I believe these other protocol tokens will compete with Ethereum and therefore take some of the market share. What happens when Ethereum loses market share of a sector? It then can become a market underperformer. Can you still be up 100% for the year and still be considered an underperformer? Yes, if Bitcoin's up more than that, if these other protocol tokens move higher percentage-wise, percentage gains than that, that then dictates Ethereum is an underperformer. But we'll see. Really, like somebody else said, and like I said, it is all going to depend on if Ethereum can scale. Right now, it is not scaling. It is having congestion. It's having too many trash dApps clogging up its mempool, clogging up its blockchain, which is causing some of the better apps to have some issues with their developments. That's just a matter of fact. And I see, I, I guarantee some Ethereum developers will be moving over to the likes of Ethereum Classic here shortly. 
I can almost guarantee that. It's, you can already see it happening. You just got to look for it. Open your eyes, get in some discords, get on Reddit, get into some forums, get into GitHub and see, check the repositories. People who have had done code for Ethereum and GitHub, now you can see their name popping up in the Ethereum classic GitHubs. It's happening. So we'll see. I still think Ethereum has great, it's doing, it's already got the market position, the name, it's going to have institutional money. All I'm saying is that some of these smaller protocols may see better percent gains than Ethereum moving forward. That's John all. Miller mentioned Quantum's better than Ethereum. You know, if that's true, I, I, I'm disappointed Quantum is trading so heavy here. So it'd be nice for that one to perk up. And then give me the screen back one more time. Oh, God. I've got the daily uh, Bitcoin software. You can see here volume, biggest green bar yet. And uh, obviously a, a nice day. So the uh, OP is supporting it. Everything is cool. The technometer, again, I've been saying I don't think the numbers are correct. They're trying to fix that. We are at overbought, but we're not extreme overbought. So in a bull trend, you do not want to sell the first overbought reading. That'll get you in trouble. So you don't want to sell that. That's all I got. I'm That's tired. That's all we got. I'm beat. That was a good show. We had a lot of topics. Make sure to have some more questions. Put them in the comment section with your Zen address if you want. Also, come in, in the chat box during the next live show and keep asking your questions. We can bounce some ideas off each other. We don't need to agree about everything. All we need to do is gather information, gather knowledge, and be willing to accept that knowledge for what it is. So that's it. Hit Sh that like button, hit that sh sh share button, and that subscribe button. Shout out to the seven thumbs down. We love you. We love that. Too bad you I ain't got a thumbs life. thumbs up, but I love <laughs> thumbs down. Whatever it is, as long as you are interacting. I love thumbs. As long as you're interacting with the show, that's all I can ask for, guys. Thank you again. Uh, as you guys know, if you watched the show yesterday, I will not be here tomorrow or Thursday. If you want to know why, you can watch the show yesterday. I don't really want to talk about it. But I do have some interviews between now and this weekend, so keep an eye out, one of which may be a pretty big one. So that could be pretty exciting. And that's all we got. Until next time, guys, stay tuned for your daily updates on cryptocurrencies right here at Learn Crypto. Peace out. Hey, hey, stay positive, pal. Most people, when they lose, they whine and quit. But you got to be there for the turns. Everybody's got good luck. Everybody's got bad luck. Don't run when you lose. Play hard. Play clean. Be careful out there. We'll see you all again. Sleep tight. <laughs>